fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come oh, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still there? Away! The acid used at Sundance Mine was shipped from the east in huge bottles known as carboys. Each carboy weighed about 100 pounds. And when the shipment reached the mine, the carboys were stored in the office vault. One day, Hank Bibbs, the mine foreman, entered the vault. He picked up one of the carboys, but the bottle slipped from his hand. <laughs> Hank rushed from the vault, slamming the door on the choking fumes. Fortunately, his heavy boots protected his feet and legs from the corrosive liquid. He was able to remove them before the acid reached his skin. But because of the poisonous fumes, it was days before anyone could enter the vault. During that time, the fumes acted on paper money kept in the vault, causing the green ink to fade to a lighter shade. Four days after Hank's accident at Sundance Mine, Cutaway Curtis summoned two friends to the back room of his cafe in Mountain City. One of the hard-faced men was known as Rusk. The other was a heavily built gunslinger named Beaver. What's on your mind, Cutaway? Uh, how come you sent for Beaver and me? Have a job for us? A big job, boys. What is it? The first of the month's payday at Sundance Mine. Yeah? There's a $25,000 payroll in the office vault and only one guard on duty to watch it. Oh. What about the combination to the vault? The bookkeeper knows the combination. He'll be in the office tonight doing a lot of paperwork. All you boys have to do to get the cash is go there, overpower the guard, force the bookkeeper to open the vault, and walk out with $25,000. Well, it's a, it's a good idea, Cutaway, but I... But what? Well, I heard Sheriff Winters say he'll organize a vigilance committee if there's any more crime committed in these parts. I'll handle Sheriff Winters. All you have to think about is a Sundance payroll. I want that cash. Savvy? Yeah, I savvy, Cutaway. <laughs> Come on, Rusk. We'll make our plans. The payroll was stolen by the Cutaway Curtis gang and news of the robbery spread through town like wildfire. Sheriff Winters organized a vigilance committee, but in spite of their best efforts, it was impossible to pick up the trail of the thieves. When the lawman returned to his office the evening following the holdup, he found the owner of the Sundance Mine waiting for him. 
Hello, Sheriff. Well, howdy, Sam. You didn't get those two crooks, huh? We couldn't even find their trail. Then our only hope of capturing those thieves is to watch for the stolen money. The fumes of the acid hang drop bleached every one of those bills. It'll be as easy to identify as marked money. But the pull catch who stole it might hold on to that cash for years. In that case, Sheriff, we've no hope of catching them. You know, we might get them with some outside help. Huh? What kind of help? I'm thinking of a gent who's outsmarted all kinds of crooks. Who do you mean? The Lone Ranger. What? I'll wire every newspaper in the Southwest and ask him to carry our story. If the Lone Ranger is in these parts, sooner or later he'll read that we're in trouble. The Lone Ranger was closer than Sheriff Winters or Sam Collins realized. Early the next morning, the masked man and his Indian companion made camp in the hills above Mountain City. Tottle went to town for supplies, and when he returned, he also brought a newspaper with a surprising front page headline. Oscar, oh, fella. Easy, Scott, easy, fella. Here, newspaper, Kimasabi. It says Sheriff won't help a Lone Ranger. Oh. When his masked friend had read the story, Toto said, Me here in town, crooks steal $25,000 from Sundance Mine. Now, this newspaper quotes the sheriff as saying that he thinks a gang of outlaws are operating in Mountain City. If an unknown gang is in town, we may be able to learn more about them by going there. Oh, do you want me to go to town? Try get news? No, Toto. I'll go to Mountain City myself. I'll take off my mask and wear a disguise. Oh, what kind of disguise? A gunslinger looking for work. Any kind of work. Give me a hand, Toto. I'll need your help. Uh-huh. Half an hour later, the Lone Ranger put down the hand mirror he had used and turned to Toto. Well, Toto? Uh-huh. Scar, cross face, plenty good ID. You change shape and nose, mouth. And there's only one thing, Kimasabi. Well, what's that? Guns, gun belt. Silver bullets make it easy to show you, Lone Ranger. Yes, you're right, Tano. I have other guns and a gun belt in my saddlebag. I'll use those. Late that afternoon, Beaver and Rusk were sitting at a table in Cutaway Curtis's cafe. Having successfully stolen $25,000 that couldn't be spent had put an edge on the temper of the two thieves. Instead of receiving a payoff for their work, Cutaway had cursed them both for their stupidity, and neither Rusk nor Beaver had the courage to remind him that the robbery had been his idea. Chafing with resentment and helpless fl- frustration, they had been brooding over the unexpected result of the holdup. While Rusk played a silent game of solitaire, Beaver tried to forget his disappointment by making friends with Sue Garnett, a singer Cutaway had hired. Come on, Susie, sit down at our table. Sorry, I... I said sit down. Let go, Mom. You'd better do as the what? lady says. Hey, what the... Beaver whirled to face the newcomer. He didn't know that the stranger was the disguised Lone Ranger, but he did know that the intrusion was an excuse to fight. This is none of your business, stranger. Clear out of here. I'll stay, but that may be good advice for you, miss. Thanks, mister. I was about to leave when Beaver stopped You'll me. You'll stay I... here, Sue. And as for this stranger... Look out, stranger. Beaver's going for his gun. That's a mistake. Oh, hey. No, what about you? Are you backing your friend's play? Oh, no, no, not oh. me, mister. That, uh, that was fast shooting. Oh, yeah. Beaver's gun was out of leather when you drew. My hand is... My bullet hit your gun, not your hand. I'll get you for that, mister. I'll kill you. Shut up, Beaver. You asked for trouble in your gun. Hey, what's the gun play? Who started the shooting? No, no, no. There's no fight, gents. Just a friendly argument. It's all settled now. Go on back to your tables and forget yeah, about it. A friendly argument, huh? Yeah, it looks like the stranger settled. Yeah, it. Beaver's uh, gun's out of commission. Yeah. Yeah. Who are you? Call me Scar. Scar what? So the handbills haven't caught up with me, huh? You, you're an outlaw? I figured you were on the dodge. What if he is, Beaver? Sue, you said you were going home. Yes, I, I am. Goodbye, Scar. Thanks for helping me. I'm glad I was able to help. You're fast with your guns and you're on the dodge. <laughs> That's a good combination, Scar. Cutaway will want to know about you. Why? To 
turn me over to the law? <laughs> Don't worry, Scar. We couldn't turn you in till we find out why and where you want it. Who's Cutaway? Well, he owns this place. He might have a job for you. I'm looking for work, but I don't want work in the cafe, so now, I... hold on, hold on. Yeah? I wouldn't have mentioned it if I didn't think Cutaway could use you. Come on, I'll take you to his office. Cutaway Curtis was not in his office. He didn't return until evening, and when he entered the back door, he found Rusk and Beaver waiting for him. Rusk told the cafe owner about the stranger he knew as Scar... He was surprised when Cutaway eyed him coldly. He told you he was on the dodge, and you told him I'd be able to use him. He's fast with his guns, Cutaway. I wish your brains were fast. Huh? Now he knows I hire outlaws. Well, that's right. Listen, I... you chughead. I spend the afternoon with the sheriff. He and the vigilance committee are working day and night to try to uncover an unknown gang. If the word gets around town that I've hired a wanted man, the law will know who's ahead of the gang. Yeah, I should have killed that ugly face galoot. Oh, that's right, Beaver, that's right. Kill a Mike of face so you can be tried for murder. Of all a loco trigger happy... Where's Scar now? Well, he said he'd be at the hotel if I wanted to see him. That's the first good news I've heard. Send word to him that you want to see him. Tell him you'll meet him. Yeah? When you see him, tell him you're riding out of town on a job for me. Beaver, you follow Rusk and his friend, Scar. Well, why should I follow? You wanted to kill Scar, didn't you? As soon as he and Rusk are a safe distance from town, let him have it. In the back, if you have to, but get him. Savvy? Ah, I savvy, Cutaway. It'll be a pleasure to gun him. But, boss, the fellas who were in the cafe saw Beaver pull a gun on Scar. If Scar's found dead, Beaver will be the first one suspected of killing him. Hey... I hadn't thought of that. Don't worry, Beaver. If the law comes around asking questions, I'll swear that you were in this office with me at the time of the killing. I'll see that you have an alibi. In that case, I'll be sure to take care of it. Sue Garnett left the cafe ahead of Beaver and Rusk. She hurried through the dark streets toward the hotel. And when she saw the man she knew as Scar coming from the lighted building, she called. Scar! Scar! Yes? Oh, I'm so glad I found you. I've got to talk to you. What's wrong, Miss They're going to kill you. Who's going to kill me? Cutaway Curtis. I went back to the cafe this evening. I sing there every night. But after what happened this afternoon, I decided to quit. I went to Mr. Curtis's office. And I was about to knock on the door to tell him I was leaving when I overheard him talking to Beaver and Rusk. They, they mentioned your name and, and I listened. As briefly as possible, the frightened girl told the disguised Lone Ranger what she had overheard. He listened quietly. I would have gone to the sheriff, but I, I thought you were an outlaw, so I came here to warn you instead. I appreciate the warning. You better leave town. I'll leave temporarily, but I'll be back. What? Goodbye, Miss Sue, and thanks for the warning. I'll not forget that you saved my life. The Lone Ranger went directly to the stable behind the hotel. He mounted the great horse Silver and left town. You see the big fella. Come on, Silver. When he was sure he had not been followed, he joined Toto in their camp. Oh, Silver. Oh, you see the big fella. What you learn about crooks, Kimasabi? A great deal, Tonto. I think Cutaway Curtis is the man we want, but I have no evidence to back my suspicions. How you get him? I have a plan, but I'll need your help. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
able to continue. Early the next morning, the Lone Ranger was back in Mountain City. He took up a position near Cutaway Curtis's cafe. And when he saw Rusk and Beaver approaching, he walked toward them. The two thieves stopped at once when he called... Rusk, Beaver. Ah, hey. oh. oh, we were looking for you last night. Where were you? I was in the hills north of town. I think I've found the tracks I've been looking for. Do uh, you two want to come with me on a job? Well, where are you going? I'll be heading out of town. Oh, out of town, huh? Well, sure we'll go with you. Come on, Rusk, we'll get our horses. Beaver and Rusk joined the still-disguised Lone Ranger and headed north. They left town, and as they approached the bridge that spanned Big Bend River, Beaver tried to drop behind. He was maneuvering into position to shoot the Lone Ranger in the back. What's the idea, Beaver? Huh? You're dropping behind. Well, I... I uh... don't turn my back on strangers. Right ahead of me. Now, hold on. <laughs> you better do as he says, Beaver. He's faster on the draw than you are. <laughs> Come on, boy. You said you were looking for tracks in the hills. Who are you trying to find, Scar? Did you ever hear of the Lone Ranger and Tonto? Sure, we've heard of them. So is Sheriff Winters, eh, hey, Beaver? Yeah. The sheriff would like to find that masked man. I know where to find him. You mean he's in these parts? He's a lot closer than you or the sheriff suspect. But he'll not be around here long. First, I'll deal with his friend Tonto. Then what have I... you got against him? What would you do if those two were on your trail? Uh, you, you mean they're looking for you? Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hey, hold it. hey, what's the idea of drawing your gun, Scott? Drop yours. What? Wait, I said drop them. He has us covered, Rusk. Mm. I know better than try drawing against you, Scar. <laughs> uh, we dropped our guns. Now what's the matter? Dismount. Easy, boy. Steady, boy. Oh, now listen, Scar. I'll you pick got... up your guns and keep them for the time being. Yeah, but what's the idea? Look at the hills on the other side of the river. Hey, there's a rider coming down the trail. That rider's an Indian. Hey, you're right. It is a redskin. Do you recognize him? I never saw him before. His name is Toto. Touch! I took your gun because I didn't want you to shoot him. I want the first shot at that Indian, and one shot will be all I need. You're going to kill him? Stay back in these trees till he hits the bridge. But it's risky to start gunplay here. We're not far from town. If anyone hears a shot... That Indian's probably on his way to town to see the sheriff. I'm going to stop him before he gets there. With his guns drawn, the Lone Ranger watched while Toto approached the wooden bridge. Neither Beaver nor Rusk knew that the Indian had been in the hills, watching through binoculars for the approach of the disguised Lone Ranger and his two companions. As soon as he saw his friend, he had mounted and ridden toward the river. As Scout's hoofs struck the bridge, the Lone Ranger fired. Tonto clutched his chest and reeled from the saddle. He fell over the side of the bridge to the river below. You, you got him. Kill the Lone Ranger's partner. Well, wait till Cutaway hears this. <laughs> I told you Scar was all right, Beaver. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get out of here before that shot brings someone from town. A short time later, Rusk, Beaver, and the man they called Scar drew rein behind Cutaway's cafe. The two thieves didn't know that the Lone Ranger's bullet had not touched Toto. They believed that the Indian was dead, and they insisted that Scar accompany them while they reported to the boss. The three men entered the back door to Cutaway's office. The outlaw leader listened to their story. Then he turned to the disguised Lone Ranger. Well, Scar, maybe I figured you wrong. That's a mistake a lot of men have made, Curtis. I didn't know that mask man was around here. Well, he's captured a lot of crooks, Cutaway. He's dangerous. If he comes here... I know all that, Rusk. You claim to know where to find that masked man, huh, Scott? I know where he is. I'll pay a reward for him. I have my own plans. Well, maybe you'll change him for a price. What do you have against the Lone Ranger? I want to see his face and question him before he's killed. I'll take his silver bullets and keep his guns as a, a souvenir. How much is he worth to you? You name a price. $25,000. Bring him here alive and it's a deal. You might be planning to pay me off in lead. I made a deal. I'll keep it. Let's see the money. All right, I'll show it to you, Scar. 
But you'll not collect until you deliver the Lone Ranger to this office, Savvy? I understand. There. Here's the money, Scar. There's $25,000 here. It's yours when you turn that mask man over to me and my boys. The disguised Lone Ranger leaned against the wall as he eyed the currency in Cutaway's hands. A quick glance showed that the bills were bleached and faded. He recognized the Sundance payroll. Cutaway returned the money to the safe and closed the door. Now you've seen the cash, when will you bring the Lone Ranger here? I want all my boys on hand to meet that masked man. Tell me when to expect you and I'll see if they're all in my office. I'll bring him here tonight. Good. See that the money is ready, Curtis. It'll be on this table, waiting for you. Disguised as Scar, the Lone Ranger left Mountain City. He joined Tonto and told what had happened after the fake shooting. <laughs> now, Cutaway, think you real outlaw, huh? Yes, Tonto. He's offered $25,000 about bringing the Lone Ranger. Now that you're supposedly dead. Um, what you do? I'll keep my promise. Uh, what promise? The Lone Ranger will be in Cutaway's office tonight. Uh, as soon as it's dark, we go into town. Before I go to the cafe, I'll call on Sheriff Winters. It was nearly midnight when the Lone Ranger, wearing his mask and riding clothes, drew rein in the rear of Sheriff Winters' home. Tonto was with him, and as the masked man dismounted, the Indian said, Me stay with horses, Kimasari. Good idea, Tonto. There's a light in the kitchen. Sheriff Winters must be home. Yes, who's that? A friend. Well, what is it? I'll step inside if I may, Sheriff. Gee, who... Your master. You wanted to see the Lone Ranger? That's right, but... You mean you're the Lone Ranger? Perhaps a silver bullet will serve to identify me. Here, Sheriff. Gee, it is silver. Well, doggone it, mister, I'm, I'm sorry I threw down on you. I, I need your help. Well, that's why I'm here. You see, there's a gang operating in this part of the country, and I'm sure their headquarters is here in town, but I can't get a lead on the critters. Cutaway Curtis is the leader of the gang. Curtis? Why, he owns a cafe. He engineered the Sundance robbery. Do you have proof of that? The stolen payroll money is in his safe. Are you sure? Yes, I saw it. Well, in that case, I'll go there with a warrant. Sheriff, I'd like to suggest a plan that will result in the capture of Curtis and all of the men in his gang. <laughs> well, that kind of a plan would be worth listening to, mister. What is it? There are only two entrances to Curtis's office. Hmm? One is through the cafe, and the other is from the outside. That's the back door. Right. I'll go to the back door of the office. As soon as I'm inside, you go through the cafe and enter the office. A short time later, Cutaway Curtis, Beaver, Rusk, and half a dozen other hard-faced outlaws gathered in the office at the back of the cafe. The stolen money, which was more dangerous than valuable to the gang, was on the table in the middle of the room. As Cutaway glanced at his watch, Rusk said, Oh, don't worry, Cutaway. Scar will be here. We have nothing to lose by waiting. By paying Scar with a Sundance payroll, you'll kill two birds with one stone. I plan to notify the sheriff as soon as the payroll is in Scar's hands. If Winters captures Scar with that money on him, he'll be blamed for the robbery. Hey. What's that? Someone's at the door. Maybe it's Scar. Who is it? Here's the little ranger. What? Hey, I'll open the door, boss. Hey. Rusk hey. opened the door wide. A masked man stood in the doorway with a colt in each hand. And the man known as Scar was nowhere to be seen. As the Lone Ranger entered the room, Rusk, Beaver, and the other outlaws raised their hands. That's it. Keep your hands up. You're covered, Cutaway. You'd better follow the example of your men. So Scar double-crossed... No, no, he didn't, boss. That voice. What about the voice, Beaver? You, you're Scar. That's right. I don't know what your play is, but you can't cover eight of us at once. You're right. through, Cutaway. Who's you cover... It's the sheriff and deputy. Well, we're having a chance now. We can't get away. Keep your hands up, Jim. Get Where's out. my payroll cash? The Sundance payroll is on the table. As Sheriff Winters, mine owner Sam Collins, and five deputies entered the office with drawn guns, Rusk, Beaver, and the other outlaws backed up against a wall. 
Cutaway Curtis realized he faced arrest and exposure. Escape through the cafe was cut off by the deputy standing in the doorway. But the rear exit from his office was blocked by only one man, the Lone Ranger. Cutaway snatched at a shoulder holster, but the masked man saw the gesture. He fired his right-hand gun. That was a fool move, Cutaway. And mighty fancy shooting, mister. My arm. My arm, it's broken. Yep, and so is your fighting spirit from the looks of you. Your lick, Cutaway. Say, Sam, is that cash the mine payroll? Yes, it is, Sheriff. See for yourself how the bills are faded. Yep, that's all the evidence we need. Put handcuffs on these Curtis boys. I'm wounded, my arm. Doc will take care of it as soon as you're in jail, Curtis, and that'll be mighty soon. Well, Sheriff, this takes care of Mountain City's outlaw gang. It does, mister, and I'm much obliged to you. Sheriff, this man's name is Scar. He shot an Indian named Tonto. You're a loco, Cutaway. Tonto's outside your office right now. But he can't be. He is. Scar, you dirty double-crossed... You weren't double-crossed, Curtis. I promised I'd bring the Lone Ranger here... I did. You claim you're the Lone Ranger? You wanted a souvenir cut away, a silver bullet. Well, here's one. I'll leave it with you as a memento. Adios, Sheriff. Oh, are you leaving, mister? Yes, Tunnel's outside with the horses. Goodbye, mister, and thanks a lot. I'm glad I was able to help you. This is a silver bullet, all right, but how'd he get it? You still can't believe it, I get away. <laughs> You'll have a long time to think it over while you're in jail. If you think long enough... Maybe someday you'll savvy how you were outsmarted by the Lone Ranger. is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.